Hello and welcome to Wisdom from the Word. I'm Pastor Greg. Today's message is entitled, Be Yourself. Be Yourself. Since 1980, after being saved and called to preach, I allowed myself to be drawn into a personality that God didn't design for me. Let me see if I can explain. I would always hear this. You need to be more forceful and breathe out hellfire on sins. Now don't get me wrong. If God has equipped you with that gift, then by all means follow him. But God gave me the gift of a preacher teacher and a certain type of personality to go along with it. Many other preachers would say, you have to run around the church or up and down the pews and let the spit fly. They tried to make me like themselves, not allowing God to use me in the way that he wanted to. And being young and new to the faith, I always felt guilty that I didn't measure up to their expectations. Frankly, it was depressing, and it made me just want to give up and not serve the Lord at all. Preachers would tell me I had to be more aggressive, just like them. But friends, I finally learned, after a few years, that God made us all different, and exactly the way He wanted us to be, with skills, knowledge, abilities, gifts, etc., just right for each individual. You see, we're not carbon copies. If I don't get anything else across through this message, remember this word of wisdom. Be what God wants you to be. Don't try to be someone He didn't create you to be, regardless of the gifts and talents you have. If you don't, you've wasted the gifts that God has personally entrusted only to you. Don't try to be like so-and-so, because the moment you do, you will venture outside of God's will and become a castaway floating on a sea of uselessness. Always listen to that still, small voice that every believer has and follow him. Look at the apostles, pastors, and teachers, and preachers in the Bible. None were ever near alike. None of them. They were all different. They did the Lord's work as God gave them special dispositions and abilities. Another thing, God never told preachers how to preach other than preach the word in season and in out. Some, like Peter, preached with a loud, bold, gruff voice. Others, with the mild and meekness of John. Some were shy. Others were outspoken. Again, be yourself and preach and teach as God has given you, else you will not bring much fruit to the kingdom of God's glory. Another word of caution I might give you, don't do like some who search for a person's particular sins and then blast it so everyone else can hear it. Preach as God speaks to you from his book. Never with someone in mind that you just want to put in their place. This is wrong, my friends. If you have a vendetta against someone, the Bible tells us to go to them in private and correct them that they may return to the faith. You should never seek to embarrass and call people out on a particular sin in front of everybody else in front of the whole congregation without first going to them one-on-one. I want you to listen to Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. It says, Moreover, 
If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, then thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen, a heathen man and a publican. You see, that's the biblical way to approach a wayward brother. Should you have a problem with someone, go to them private. Else you will hinder the spirit in the church that's speaking to others, especially to those who are there and lost without Christ. Don't be drawn in to these petty open-air feuds, even here on Facebook. I have never won a person to Jesus Christ through arguing. Not one. Always preach out of love. Love covers a multitude of sins, the Bible says. You or I will never win the loss without showing and displaying the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross because he loved you. And you've got to express and get that over to the lost people that he loves them so much that he died for their sins. For God, the Bible says, is love. That's his nature. Leave the judging to the great judge. Most people know they are sinners. But what they aren't aware of is the fact that that the love of God has a remedy for sin. And that's the love from the one who poured forth his blood from the cross. Endless, boundless love of Jesus will convict and save on its own without harping continuously on a particular sin. Now don't take me in the wrong way. There's a time for everything, a time to preach on sin, a time to preach with boldness, and there is a time to give them the honey of the cross. Just knowing you are a sinner will not save you. Only believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins and accepting that gift from God is what saves us. A person. Please don't tell someone they're a sinner, lost, dying, and going to hell without also telling them the remedy for sin, which is the shed blood of the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. That's the gospel, the gospel that saves the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the good news that everyone in the world needs to hear. Hanging a person over the flames of hell is okay, my friends, but never leave them there without a way of escape through the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sins. So I ask you, dear friend, in conclusion, are you saved Are you going to heaven when you die? Do you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt? Have your sins been forgiven by the blood of Jesus? Have you trusted and received God's gift of salvation through faith? If not, then I ask you to believe right now that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried three days in a tomb, And that on the third day he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave so that you could be saved from hell and go to heaven someday. If you don't know for sure that you're going to heaven, would you please right now believe those things? Again, believe the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gospel. 
and by faith receive God's gift of salvation. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9, For by grace, God's favor, are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's not of works, it's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. Would you do it right now and don't wait? We don't have a promise of another day. Our life is even as a vapor. It's here one second and it's gone the next. If you did believe these things that the Bible says, then you have been saved by the grace of God. I hope and pray that you will let me know in the comments below so I can also rejoice with you would you do that? So until next time, this is Pastor Greg saying, May God bless you and keep you and fill you with all peace and joy. In Jesus' name, amen.